welcome back to At Home Alicia. And today we're going to talk about a few of my favorite things when it comes to prep, application, cleanup, and finally removal of your nail dips. So let's get started with the prep because we all know that your nail dip is only as good as your preparation. One of my very favorite things and kind of a little bit of a magic tool that I have discovered is this glass cuticle pusher. And so one of the things that is fantastic about this is that you can notice it has this pencil end, but that it also has this nice angled end that's a little bit softer than you may find with some of the more aggressive metal pushers that are out there that could run the risk of damaging your nails or even tearing your cuticles. So this is definitely a more gentle option for those of you that may be a little bit heavier handed out there. And something that's great about this pencil tip is that you can hold it like a standard writing utensil and then just go ahead and trace around your cuticle edge and go ahead and remove any debris that the actual filing end did not get. So that's something that I love. I've had great success with it. And I always follow it up with just a very quick buff using a buffer block. Now this is optional. I do want to caution you that the key here is to be gentle. You don't want to rough up your nails too much because after you have taken off your dip powder, they may be a little bit more sensitive than usual. So you're going to want to take care to be very gentle. I personally choose to do this because my nails and my skin are a bit more oily than some. So if you feel like this is not something that would benefit you, it's totally optional. You can feel free to skip it. And then after I am done with the cuticle prep process, I take the same stiff brush that I have for my application and just do a quick brush over my nails to make sure that any of that debris is removed before I do my liquid and then my powder. And so finally, what I like to do at this stage is use my pH prep number one from Sparkle & Co. I know a lot of you out there use rubbing alcohol. That is how I started as well. And that is completely fine. But what I find with this item is that it does a better job dehydrating my nails because like I said, I am a little bit oilier than some. So I actually do two quick passes on my nails with this and you can see it dry lickety split and I'm good to go for application. And some of you little eagle eyes out there might have spotted one of my little tips that I have on this jar. So, as you can see, I have just a very, very high tech rubber band on this bottle here, and you may be wondering why. In a previous video, we had talked about that I have MS, and one of the side effects of that for me is a reduction in hand strength and a little bit less dexterity than I would normally have, and it happens to affect my dominant hand a lot more. So what that means is bottles like this can be a little bit tricky for me to open. That is why I have taken just a simple rubber band. I've went ahead and put it on this portion of the bottle and then rather than having to stick with the slippery part of the bottle, I can grip onto the rubber band and just turn very easily and use that to help me open the bottle, even in cases where it may have had some pooling of the liquids below and been a little bit sticky. Hot take tip there, when that does happen to you, take a bottle and just flip it upside down, put it in warm water to about this level and allow that warm water to work on your stuck liquids and essentially melt them. And then you can open the bottle a lot more easily. Now let's move into the application process. So one of my very favorite tools for this step is going to be my hand rest. So I got this one from SJ Designs. It's a great shop that does 3D printing for a bunch of different nail accessories. I highly recommend checking them out if you have not yet. But this hand rest, which you can see here they have done in the beautifully light catching mermaid design, allows me to fit my whole hand when I am doing my application process for liquids. And what this does for me is rather than having to suspend it on say a jar or something else, or even try to brace it with another finger, given that I don't have that great hand strength, I can rest my entire hand on this and know that it's going to provide me that support when laying down flat on my desk so that I can maintain control when I'm using my liquids. Something else that I also like to do is do my dip powders with 
a silicone cupcake liner. So I know a lot of you use paper cupcake liners. I did as well until I found myself going through tons and tons of them. What I love about these little guys, as you can see, they're very flexible. So it makes it super easy to go ahead and pour in the overflow dip powder. After you have finished your application, it can go right back into the jar. And you can also pop them in the sink, do them with dishes. And it is just a great way to have something that you can consistently reuse without having to go through the waste of using disposable cupcake liner papers every single time. And then once I have my powder on, I love to use this precision tool. So what this is, is just a much more precise finite point. And it is how you get those lovely edges around your cuticles that we all want to see because we know when your free edge is clean, it's not going to have as much interference from your skin and it can help your manicure last even longer. I snagged this one from the Color My World Dips shop. I love it, it came in a set of three, so I know I'll always have them on site for when I'm doing my dip applications. Okay, I did a couple of videos that featured this in the past, so if you've stuck around and seen my channel before, you know that I'm going to rave about this mini vacuum from Ritzy Dips. So dips can be a little messy. The powder can tend to go everywhere. And even if you pride yourself on being the neatest person ever, you may be finding glitter now and again, if you don't have one of these little guys. So all you need to do is charge it with a USB cord and then you turn it on and just apply it gently around your base that you have worked with and it collects all that extra dust powder that may have been left behind. I absolutely love, love, love this little thing. I could not recommend it more. It has made my cleanup process an absolute breeze. So, on to the last thing, and that is going to be our removal. So let's say it's been a few weeks and you are ready to switch out that manicure. One of the things that I have found along the way when I do my removal, which is with the baggy method and a bowl of warm, almost hot water, is using this remover. So as you can see, this is gonna be Onyx Professional and it has coconut in it. So we all know that acetone is not the best for our nails or our skin, but it's something that is incredibly effective at giving those dips off, even if they have glitter. So what I love to do is take this and go ahead and pour it in the corner of my baggie that I keep submerged in the water to go ahead and make sure it stays warm, add that cotton ball, but before I submerge my hand, I take just your everyday run-of-the-mill Vaseline petroleum jelly and I spread it on this part of my fingers. So what that does is help me retain the moisture in my hands while the acetone is working on my nails. And then I'm making sure not to dry out my skin during those five to 10 minutes per hand that it's going to take me to get my dip nails off. So there you have it, everyone. These are a few of my favorite things, as Julie Andrews says. If you would like more information on any of them, I will go ahead and put it in the description below. Like I said, I highly recommend checking out this shop. They have some great items for storage solution, hand rest, finger rest, places that you can store your jars and your bottles. And I would love for you to support yet another small business out there. If you are appreciating my videos, I would love a like and a subscribe so that I can keep generating this content for you. I'm having a blast on this content creation journey and I hope that you are learning a few things with me along the way. That's all we have for today. Please stay tuned for some upcoming videos and I hope to see you all back here soon. Take care.